Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to East Dundee's regular meeting of the Village Trustees. Uh, Monday, May 20th, 2024. I've got 601. Kathleen, take the call. Bro. Trustee Kunze. Present. Trustee Britton will likely not be here. Trustee Saviano. Here. Trustee Triber will not be here. Trustee Sauter. Here. And Trustee Mahoney. Here. President Lino. Here. If you all rise with me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. That'll take us, we're going to read the consent agenda. Not be doing just a moment or? Just a motion. Okay. If we could have a motion for the consent agenda. Sure, I will move to approve the consent agenda as it appears in the agenda, items A through C. I have a second. Okay. Any questions? No? Yeah. Trustee Kunze? Yes. Trustee Saviano? Yes. Trustee Sauter? Yes. Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Great. And that'll take us to our regular agenda items. First one will be the swearing in of Sergeant Kevin Lawson. Chief Fordyce, you have the floor. So one of the great uh, pleasures of, of police administration is seeing your people succeed and grow in their careers. So tonight I'm proud to uh, uh, speak on behalf real quickly here to introduce Kevin Lawson uh, as his promotion to sergeant. Kevin Lawson is an eight-year veteran of law enforcement. Currently he's a police officer at the East Dundee Police Department. He started his police journey by joining the Roselle Police Department's Explorer program in 2010. While part of the Explorer program, he was able to get a glimpse of what it means to be a police officer. In 2011, Kevin joined the Harper College Police Department as a community service officer. In 2016, Kevin then joined the East Dundee Police Department. After completing the police academy, field training, and the probationary period, Kevin was able to test for the Kane County SWAT team. In 2017, Kevin was selected to join the Kane County SWAT team and served until January 2024. He's also currently our range master. Kevin's academic accomplishments include a Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Social Justice from Benedictine University an associate's degree in criminal justice from Harper College. Kevin is a strong proponent of the I Leave Accreditation Program. Kevin remains very active in the community. He's well respected in the community as a member of good standing with his church. He enjoys competitive sports, working out, and tinkering with his motorcycle. He has one wonderful daughter, Charlotte, and one brother, Robert. Can you come up, Kevin? And Thank you. 
to our next item, which is a discussion of the possibility of adding the performing arts venue in downtown. So, would you like to take the floor? And Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Caranda. I'm the CEO and Executive Director of the Rouse Center for the Arts, and I have been for the last 18 years up in the facility of Illinois. Uh, it's a distinct pleasure to stand before you today and to address this uh, incredible community. Um, over the last couple of years, uh, Rouse Center has bounced back from COVID. We're seeing our numbers increase, and we really love the idea of bringing the arts to all. So we're here today to officially uh, ask you to consider building and creating an arts center that uh, we would uh, collaborate with you on and uh, hopefully serve uh, populations that are underserved in the region, but most importantly, be an economic uh, draw to uh, this wonderful town. But really, uh, help the community find a voice that is palpable, that enhances the existing artist that, uh, artistry that exists here. Uh, we've been in a focus over the last eight years, nine years, looking at different properties uh, throughout the region, and we find that, uh, you know, your square is incredibly exciting to us. Uh, and when I say us, it's not just my board and the staff, the 400 volunteers, the over something like 3,000 artists that will uh, visit Crystal Lake and participate in the story. But uh, really the population base that is drawn to the town up in Crystal Lake. And we think we can do the same for you here in East Dundee. Um, I've sent along a presentation. Uh, I have a reputation of being able to log for the gift of the gab. So I'm going to try not to. Uh, go through the presentation point by point. We're really hoping that this is just the starting point to uh, initiate a dialogue and really pursue the growth that's uh, been very attractive. Uh, I, I would kill for a square like this up in Crystal Lake, but we don't have it. Uh, there was a site visit up in Crystal Lake about, uh, about two and a half years ago, three years ago with some of you, and we had a great uh, visit on Main Street. Um, we've seen a tremendous community come together and welcome, um, I think it's something like 31, 32% of uh, the visitors are from outside of McHenry County that come up to Crystal Lake. Something like 92% of all of our granting comes from outside of Crystal Lake. 65% of all ticket sales come from outside of Crystal Lake. So uh, the arts do work, but most importantly, they give a voice to the community and uh, to have a stronger voice, you need a, a focal point. You need a physical plant, you need a theater. We've expanded tremendously just over the last five years. Um, I think they should, my team should have included in the packet a list of our, uh, you know, the school, the rehearsal hall, all of that. Our business model that we're suggesting really plays on the strength of the law, but also opening additional days in a mirror facility in East Dundee. I think you'll find if you explore the business that this is a wonderful opportunity, not only for the town, but for us to synergy um, and create some uh, economic growth. But it allows us to retain artistic controls, operational controls, and really provide for the artists. At the core of what we do, it's about artistic expression. It's fleeting, right? When an artist takes the stage, it's a really about two, two and a half hours, sometimes three hours, but two and a half hours is where we like it. Um, 
but every night is a different performance. And through a variety of education programs, comedy, rock and roll, theater, uh, we're the only professional uh, equity theater in McHenry County. And uh, we've received grants from the NEA, the Army Arts Council, and the Driehaus Foundation, and several others. But we hope to create that energy here and be a boon for the town and complement it. Uh, we see it as a partnership and a collaboration, and we hope that today is the start of that vibrant dialogue. So that's what I have to say. <laughs> and I'm sure the paperwork is much more detailed than that. So Any I'll, questions? Before we start barraging you with sure, lots easy. and lots of questions, <laughs> I just wanted to sort of add to the foundation that you've so eloquently built right there. Um, you know, we have sort of been talking about this for a while, and it's very exciting that it's there's some momentum building, and we're uh, able to have this conversation be had this evening. In addition to, um, you know, another big conversation we're having this evening is yeah. about adding this parking garage to our downtown, which uh, you know would help serve this potential performing arts venue. Um, so. I guess I don't want to start with that because it's not as exciting as what you just said. Um, so I will hand it over to the board to have their questions and then I will jump back in near the end. Kathleen, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Um, so having n not had the opportunity to read this, but I did um, look at your, looked you up online and oh. found that you're going to be, and you have a really, I'm like impressed by your CV and your experience and what the potential that you can bring. How long have you been in um, Crystal Lake? And so I've, I've been uh, very fortunate to work with a great board and a great team. And really, I, I mean, thank you for the, the compliment, but it's really the teams that I represent that mm -hmm. deserve all the credit. I've been there for 18 years. Okay. And uh, over those years, uh, when I started, Crystal Lake had 36% uh, retail occupancy on its main street. Mm -hmm. We're up to 100% with a compression rate out two and a half miles. So very proud of it. Cool. And then what, what would your, what would your, uh, you know, like, if I could have anything I wanted, vision be for a space here in East Dundee, what would it look like, number of seats, spaces, and that, and, and types of programs that you would ideally see? Absolutely. So ideally, we'd uh, love to have anywhere from a 250 to a 350 seat in a flexible configuration. Mm -hmm. uh, ideally, a uh, fly tower that could uh, accommodate a lot of touring artists. We envision uh, the right mix for the emerging demographic here in the region really includes legit theater that runs for more than four weeks. So you can go see a show. It allows the audience and patron base to, you know, pick their date and really explore the town and really have time. Uh, the second would be education. Uh, education is uh, really the cornerstone that we build everything at Rail Center. And uh, on any given year, we'll service about 20 to 25,000 students, right? That's not just bringing kids in, that's also having individual classes. And uh, just over the last two years, we've explored adult classes. So we have an adult improv uh, that's taking place right now. We have adult screenwriting, which is taking place. Um, we've been very fortunate to attract national talent that's come to us to teach. Um, that's actually really starting to percolate. This summer, will, uh, the education program will premiere, a uh, world premiere, or a regional premiere, premiere, I should say, of a musical written by youth. Uh, so theater for kids, with kids. And okay. uh, what's really impressive is that the kids have a say, like they really create it. It's not, you know, we're, we're trying to keep up with them and holding their hands as they're <laughs> running, you know, it's that type of thing. So, uh, Theater, education, and then one-off shows, what we call pack shows, performing arts center shows. Those are shows that are uh, artists that come in for one night. In, in this particular model, that would include uh, stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. That would also include uh, a blues. That would include national touring artists. And one of the items that I should promote with you is that um, Rouse Center seats 750. Uh, and if you can't make the show on Friday night, Kind of SOL, right? Um, but if I had a secondary space that we could mirror, it would provide an opportunity for spillover. 
Sometimes we do double book. Sometimes, for instance, Jane Lynch comes out for mm -hmm. her uh, holiday show. I think we've had Jane three or four times. Amy Grant, as well, has premiered um, you know, two shows in one day. But that's really a tremendous risk based on the actual business operation. Mm -hmm. right? um, usually, somebody like Jane Lynch, it's roughly around 30000 35000 um, for a single night in our space. But to add a second night, is, you know, we're rolling the dice. Now, there is a little bit of rolling the dice in every art form, right? If you're kind of hoping that we look into the murky crystal ball and we hope that people will buy Death of a Salesman or come out and see comics on a Friday night. Uh, what we envision is having a show at the round on Friday and then something here on a Saturday or vice versa, or maybe even Sunday. If the show runs up in Crystal Lake for three weeks, we would transfer it down here for two or three weeks. And that gives us a little bit more uh, return on investment, not only in marketing, but also in granting. That's really something we're very attractive. We're somewhat landlocked in McHenry County and in Crystal Lake. And uh, some of our incredibly generous grantors, whether it's NICOR or ComEd or the Napanelli Foundation, Willow Creek, um, they've all said, you know, if you expand geographically, you're serving more, you're serving more, mm -hmm. right? And that's really what they're giving us the money for. We've run into problems where just trying to get, whether it's school kids on the buses to travel, because they have X amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. they, can only, they can only come to the row for a 55 minute show. So if, you, if, you're, if you're seeing a kid's show midday at the row, the kids are in and out in an hour and 15. What we hope to do is be able to bring those shows here as well. And uh, it also allows us to bargain for a greater artist fee, and a lesser artist fee for two shows in two places and build the market. Realistically, we're also very concerned and we want to make sure that, um, you know, my staff, uh, and I, they should have included a, uh, I don't think they include the bias, but they included a flow chart. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that does make us incredibly special, and they deserve the compliments more than I ever could, uh, the staff that we have, we're very fortunate that we have one of the highest staff retentions in the industry nationally. Our average staff member has been with us for nine and a half years. Wow. Yeah, it's fantastic. We also have the highest degree staff. I think our average degree comes in at a single MFA. We have some members of the staff that have triple MFAs or other degrees and you know, accounting that went into arts management, that type of thing. So uh, we're very fortunate to have, um, you know, they're like a well-oiled machine. They, mm -hmm. they really know what they're doing. So I would you see up. would you <laughs> see your staff and your educators working both? Yes, yes. Okay. So our preliminary uh, kind of SWOT analysis would having have us increase our staff by three, mm -hmm. and those would be three full-time positions. That would be in residence in East Dundee. And we would backroom a lot of the other operations. It wouldn't necessarily even have to be the Rao Center uh, name. It could be a new name. We would actually encourage a new name that reflects what's happening in East Dundee. And part of the joy that the staff is excited about, and the board as well, is exploring what makes East Dundee so unique. So we would do and continue a SWAT review of the demographics that are evolving. We are very interested in bilingual. We're very interested in uh, diversity. Uh, we make no bones about it. That's what our theater is kind of excited about. But at the same time, we're really a middle of the road Main Street theater that services every facet of the population. It's not uncommon to go around and see multiple generations of one family all enjoying Bob Saget. I mean, he's sort of, he was sort of the, uh, he's the bluest. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was like, what? But you know, the, the thing yeah. about it is, the artists that we select and that we program, they cater to our audience base. We really take the time to advance what's going on with them. So they know exactly who they're performing for. So mm -hmm. it's something always unique and wonderful. And when Bob comes out, you know, a lot of, a lot of 20 somethings wanted the blue show. Mm -hmm. Bob does this new show immediately, you know, just kind of in props and it's hysterical. And I asked him, what happened? What you do? I was like, I walked out, there's like, you know, a couple, old couple, priest, young kid, like, I can't curse that much in front of them. And it's not to say we're prudes, we're not. We just try to really reflect well on the audience so that it's not gimmicky, you know. We're not, um, I don't think we've ever really engaged in gimmicky artists that 
are flash in the pants. We really just go for the traditional genres that are good. It's great. And we're uh, exploring Shakespeare for next year after uh, the cicadas fall away this year <laughs> out in our arts in the park. Um, and we love that idea of doing outdoor activities as well. Um, I have more, but I don't want to bogart too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll just like, limited time. Just 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 say Scott. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I, I, <laughs> yeah. a thousand questions, but I understand you're trying to <clears throat> move along. Um, yeah, I, think so. I guess my questions, I'll, I'll limit them to um, I get my two biggest curiosities. Sure. Just one is, what are you going to be, you know, looking for from the village financially? Right. And two, what does your timeline look like? So we're pretty flexible uh, on the timeline. Uh, we would like something within the next two to three years, uh, just because we want to continue our growth. Mm -hmm. uh, the second, or the first part of the question is, uh, in terms of the finances, because of um, the public-private or the government-private, uh, we would look for grants that would help us build with the city. Um, you know, that's sort of, at first, uh, something we'd have to do with feasibility with the, the, the village and kind of say, you know what's accessible and what are your parameters for building and what mm -hmm. you know I, I, I've heard there's some wonderful architectural drawings I guess <laughs> I was teased a little bit but um, you know we've looked at the space we've talked to the prior owner and things like that so we're pretty flexible we do have some resources that we can throw towards it but it really depends on the length of what our ideal lease would look like ideally we would want to um, venture cautiously into it, measure the metrics of success with the village, and hopefully it's a good fit. If it's not a good fit, then we'd still like the out, so we're not you know, trapped, so to speak. But we want a common sense approach, so that dialogue is yet to really- So is that, are you, does that mean you would be looking for the village to build a theater and then you would lease it from us? I, in, the, in the, well sure, in the best of possible worlds, we'd love no liability. Like that, that, well that's what it sounds like you're saying. Is yeah, that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, I, well it could be, it could be. Uh, there, we're, we're just starting, so we don't necessarily have uh, definitions. We do know this, we do know this. Uh, in most municipal owned um, performing arts centers or theaters, uh, it, it does, present a long-term problem for the arts to succeed. In many respects, those, um, and I'm not really, I'm really not trying to throw mud on any of our friends in the community, uh, but for us and my team, we love having to listen to the audience and the patrons in the community. We, we really thrive on that feedback, right? Um, part of that is economic feedback. You know, we, we, we factor commitment in three ways. Do they show up? Do they give us money? And, and do they beg for more, right? So if you were to build it and just give it to us or rent to us, that would not necessarily be the best thing because then we don't have skin in the game. We want to have skin in the game and we want to be able to have ties within the community that have ownership in the community. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's not great for the municipality to, to have total ownership, right? Uh, usually in those, you see tons of staff turnover. Mm -hmm. HR can be problematic in terms of union, non-union, that type of thing. We are very union friendly, we love unions, we work with, I think, nine unions. Um, and uh, so we, we'd like to explore that and find out what it looks like. It really comes down to how big the space is. We, you know, we haven't done a feasibility study on the site in terms of like, what really needs to happen, mm -hmm. in terms of, um, practical getting shovels into the ground. Sure. So we're really just maybe stepping into this battle. Okay. And one of the possibilities that we've discussed is, you know, well first of all, just so everybody knows, we're talking about the lumber yard site in the downtown. So that, you know, the, the village just purchased that a few months ago. It presents this incredible opportunity for us to envision what could possibly go there. Um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of options. And so having this conversation start with, here's an idea, let's see what the different iterations of it could possibly be. Um, one of them is some kind of public-private partnership that could be a three-way. There could be the village, a developer, and then uh, the center. So we could work with a developer who would 
continue to own and lease to the entity, but we would have to put you know something potentially towards it as well, which might be you know the land itself or some kind of TIF incentive or something along those lines. So um, the good thing is is that we have a space that I think is quite amazing for this purpose that can also support other um, income generating operations so that everybody can be positioned well for success. So you said um, educational oppor opportunities, yeah. so you know we are close with the um, Boys and Girls Club at Dundee Township, like do you, do you go to the schools or places like that to try to get your We do, we do. Uh, we work with about 36 uh, individual civic and nonprofit groups that are geared towards children. So it's really uh, something that we're excited about, and we just started censoring uh, opportunities for uh, kids that need that. Mm -hmm. So we hope to uh, jump into a whole slew of new programs, everything from visually impaired, using new sound, audio equipment that we just purchased. So yeah, it's, it's at our corner, so. And along the educational lines, is there going to be other classrooms too, or just the main theater that you no, do? No, like, just what be, does that look like? It would just be the main theater, okay. but we do envision that if it's successful, and this goes to you know if they build a way, like, how do we do it, and mm -hmm. what kind of buy-in do we have from the community? If the community is really um, saying they want more education, then we would pursue classrooms, just like we did up in Crystal Lake. And, uh, yeah, one thing about the finances in Crystal Lake, uh, we get. Uh, 150,000 per year, that's what we've been given from the city of Crystal Lake over the last 20 years. So uh, we're kind of scrappy. We go out and raise that money wherever we can. So I just want to point that out. Okay. <coughs> Hopefully it alleviates <laughs> some mm -hmm. hey, uh, Yeah, question on parking needs, like since yeah. we're discussing a parking deck, are there, I'm sure Saturdays, like Friday, Saturday, Sundays, will be probably the show nights. Is there sure. stuff throughout the week, during the day, evening? There is. You see a big flow of traffic. Yeah, absolutely. So that's actually one of the uh, uh, stellar points of this approach that we take. We at Rouse Center operate roughly around 310, 320 days throughout the year. Friday, Saturdays, everybody loves it. We've adjusted our programming to provide for the restaurant so they can have multiple covers in one night, right? So it's not just, I think on Saturday we're at 7 o'clock now for the showtime. Friday it's 8 because people get off. Sunday we do 2. We uh, just started a Thursday matinee. But now um, going into uh, fall, we'll have pretty much six days a week activity. And, um, you know, some of it, whether it's the Giorgio's Pizzeria and Pub, they love us because mom and dad buy a pizza when they pick their kids up after rehearsal on Monday, you know, Monday night, that type of thing. But we keep the activity going. We also uh, um, try to use the uh, non-programming days for um, projects like Girls on the Lawn or Sean Media. Sean Media gets, you know, they had a film yesterday. Uh, so it's nice to have 100 people in the space at an off hour. You know, that type of thing. We have a Wednesday 8 a.m. movie for one of the banks, Home State Bank. Uh, they do the master class, that type of thing. So we look at every opportunity without breaking the staff, right? We look for kind of easy turnkey opportunities that don't require us going over the 40 hours. Right. And there's not uh, like food and alcohol sales. There's probably alcohol sales during the show, but there is, yeah. But yeah. then it'd be complimentary to the bars and restaurants. Yeah, and actually for this space, we would prefer not to have an alcohol license in the we, we would prefer to be able to have concessions, but alcohol requires a tremendous amount of due diligence on our part. Like we have to go through the Bassett training for all the servers. For us in Crystal Lake, it's all our volunteers that mm -hmm. really have to go through it. Our staff has to be trained. Um, and we actually just, I've been there for 18 years, about nine years ago, I guess, we allowed alcohol into the theater for the first time. Uh, and even now, we don't, we don't encourage it. It's usually pre-show, intermission, and that's it. We want people to come, enjoy the space, enjoy the show, and then go out. Or, you know, go out for a dinner and a drink before, but then go out afterwards. It's really about building that. And that's really more for the sake of the performer, because usually when you have people drinking, sometimes it gets a little rough. You know? yeah, and that's, yeah. not, that's just, we're theater people. We're not trained. And we don't, um, while we have security, um, you know, that's a challenge, right? It's expensive, so we prefer to avoid that kind of... That's great. 
Well, one of the things actually I recall touching base with you the last we met was the idea of competition. So I was wondering if maybe you could just touch on that for the rest of the board. Um, Elgin's got the heavens. We sure. got the steel beam in the Arcata in St. Charles. We yeah. got one in uh, Arlington Heights. There's there there uh, yeah every across the river. Sure. Sure. And so yeah. is one more theater. I mean, this is your business, and I know you you know it well. But yeah, we, are you worried about all that? We always worry. Right? Yeah, we always are. and it is a competitive business. Right? Show business is is arguably the, the toughest uh, because you can do it anywhere. You can you know have a bar and throw up somebody with a guitar and you know charge a cover. Right? Like that's mm -hmm. kind of what we do. I mean, if you boil it down. So uh, our tri um, the tripod approach, the three programming approach, provides a stable approach towards consistency so that there's always something, right? For us in the competition, you know, they're usually one-offs, whether it's the Rock House or, you know, if they're doing comedy or St. Charles. But the, the three levels of programming constantly engage different generations, right? It's easy for us to get date night. Right, and like David Sedaris, the author, mm -hmm. sells out, and like, yeah, like, it's 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 a breeze, right? And we make a lot of money. Um, but we know we can't do that consistently. We can't do that consistently with rock and roll or tribute bands, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, if you see tribute bands, you're seeing a lot of money being generated at the bar. In many instances, more money at the bar than you're seeing at the gate. We're really about the arts. We really want to explore what the voice of the artist has to say. And that gives us a competitive advantage. As we look to the next five to 10 years, we are noticing that more and more people are looking for quality of live entertainment and at a fair and reasonable price. Our pricing is incredibly competitive. We kind of, we kind of undercut the market in some respects. And next year, we'll, we'll be announcing a ticket initiative. So if you're a US vet or a, a, a responder, you can see a show for free. All you do is have to register at the box office. And you know, that's great. We're proud of that. You know, we're really, really excited about that. It takes a whole network of support systems to provide for the arts so that they're successful and profitable, right? Beer and shots are always great money. It is. Don't get me wrong. The Arcada, Ron does a wonderful job. But, you know, he's in it for profit. We're a nonprofit. We really care about the kids. We care about, you know, the retirees, we, uh, our volunteer program, it's actually pretty mixed. I shouldn't just say it's all volunteers who are older, but those older volunteers, there is something really refreshing when they come out and they spend time and they socialize. And what that does, it, it translates into the community. So there's an honest to goodness respect in the community for the space. And so we take it with great pride, you know, we take it seriously. And your relationship with Elgin Symphony is still Strong. It's great, yeah. yeah really here, probably we wouldn't be able to accommodate an entire symphony, but... But maybe outdoors. There's always outdoors, right? We've yeah, been looking for that. Yeah, that kind of thing we could certainly yeah. handle in a smaller venue. So. Yeah, and they do have smaller quartets and brass ensembles and things like that that we love. Uh, but, um, <coughs> yeah, that's right around the corner. Great. Yeah. Amazing. I understand that you have yeah, I do. Child, it's my child, gra <laughs> child graduating oh, yeah. from high school this evening. Oh, so, I appreciate the uh, time. Uh, yeah. So, eighth grade. Eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> oh, eighth grade. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm still important. Sorry. Yeah. It's still, it's still important. So, um, if there's any other burning questions, grab them in. Otherwise, no, really I would, appreciate your time. I would just say that you know we we heard about your guys' interest in our town, you know, a while ago now, yeah. and I think that like you know personally, I don't. I think probably everybody in the world we've been real excited about it. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So we're yes. glad that you're yeah, here definitely. and. Uh, we look forward to seeing what's next. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Like that. Likewise. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you again. Thank you. Right. Take care. <laughs> Drive safely. Thank you. Okay. That'll take us then to uh, our item C, and then it'll be a discussion on downtown parking garage, the final design. So, Eric, would you like to start this one off? Sure. So. Um, the Planning, Zoning, and Historic Commission reviewed some of the final proposals for the garage design, um, and they did decide on a final version. Um, because this is such a high-profile project and because it is a, a very, very large expense for the village, I thought it prudent to bring it to the village board and either endorse that selection or see if the board wanted to go a different direction. Uh, we did have several options in the packet. Uh, we do have some brick samples that we will bring out and you can touch and feel. 
and then we can have a robust discussion about what direction we want to head. Are those in the closet? Of course you do. Light to buff, Illini Common, yeah, so and that. Illini Common, and yeah, Ridgeland. Is there there? An so this is the one that they decided on for the the red, which is in the rendering. It's so very red. It's very red. Okay. <laughs> I like to actually the cedar take these out, compare them to the structure next door. The Main Street Bentle, I think they're more yeah. brown. This one, I don't know. This one has a pinkish hue. Yeah. And it's a, 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 then it's against this. So if you look at the two together, yeah. you can get a sense of what, what the recommendation was. So we want to look at those together. Those were the ones. <laughs> then this was, if you were looking at the original four color. Right. This is the white. And then that is the black. Was that the, the yes. material that we're talking about of, that we had for the entrance of a hill? That dark. This, this would be, if you're looking at, this would be, you know, basically we call them storefront one, two, three, four. Right. So storefront one is the elevator tower. To the south. This would be storefront three, this would be storefront four. Okay. On the four color version. Right. Okay. So it was actually going to be a brick. I thought perhaps it was a just a smooth finished material of some sort. No, it's all okay. right. Okay. So and this was storefront two on that one. See the light? like. Oh, you see much. Yeah. Yeah, and then light yes. was matte. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. There, and then what was the first one? Light was matte. Oh, here. Yeah. And ball again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this would be the wrong one. Is that the same as the little one? Nope. No. Now you have an accurate representation <laughs> of what, of what was from. presented. Yes. Yeah. I like what PNC picked. This one, yeah, this one seems to. That's too much. Yeah. Uh, the tumbled uh, aspect to it is, mm -hmm. is kind of got an antique feel to it. I like the color. Uh, I don't know how well it works against the red without seeing maybe what it looks like. It's like ma Main Street Dental right next to it. So uh, I feel like this is too much, too. Well, it's a little on the red side. Oh, gosh. That is a. I feel like most of the older bricks are these yellower, that, the and color, there's a lot of this. That like, style, but that color, yeah. But yeah, like your brick the rounded edges. Right. Yeah. Also, though, I, I, I like the idea of, of going with the squared off edge for one. I mean, it has a more contemporary feel. This one is a more of an antique feel, a uh, historic feel, if you will. But I think the comparison between the two is kind of a nice blend. This, I don't know. I mean, 
I, did, I wasn't expecting that black portion to actually be brick. I didn't. I don't know why I thought that. But. No, that's painted concrete on the side. No, 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 no. Well, it's that same color that when in the rendering, the entry off of Hill Street mm -hmm. was the same color. I thought material as the mm -hmm. first. Of the end unit of uh, the south end. Oh, I see. Portion. I see so the pillars. Right. These pillars here. So this no, no, not the brick. The actual dark, the actual black portion, if you will, that tied into like the the, the heading there where it says parking. Right. The background of that, that color, with the last the south unit on River Street. You know, kind of tied the two together. But I wasn't aware that that, that was going to be brick, so I don't know if that matters. It's, it's not. The storefront would be brick. That is painted concrete. That's painted mm -hmm. concrete. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, painted. Just the pillars. Is it going to it be looks, the the rendering brick. shows pillars on the on yeah. pillars to be brick based. Yes. Okay. But the rest of it's painted brick. Well, there was a there was a discussion in planning and zoning about stamping the concrete. Yes, mm -hmm. that will be our next. And that is in here, and it's actually not that expensive. So. It, yes, certainly cheaper. And I would also wonder if they could use a pigment in the cement as opposed to painting it, because that's going to be a future maintenance issue. And painted concrete doesn't hold up. How did you guys price on it? On the road what was your thought on that? Was it painted or was it dyed? Painted. painted. We see it all the time. We paint. Painted concrete? Yeah. I, I, I've seen painted concrete too, and you, I mean, depending on what you're using, I mean, if it were to be like, say, an epoxy based paint, it holding up over time doesn't seem to cooperate as much. I mean, if it were pigmented, which can't be that expensive to do, then the actual structure is, is the color, so. Yeah, the, the difference is when you're like when you're pouring a structure as opposed to pouring a sidewalk or like architectural concrete um so you're getting multiple loads and it's not getting necessarily mixed so if you're pouring a sidewalk you pour a whole sidewalk from the same truck right so when you're pouring a structure there's a possibility you're going to see different shades Absolutely. of the color with yeah. each section of the pour okay. even though it's happening at the same time it could be I see it all the time. Yeah. Well, so. What about a stain as opposed to paint? The stain um, is going to penetrate where paint will just lay on top and it eventually it will come off. I mean, unless, I don't know if it, you could probably put some sort of primer down or treatment before the paint that might help, I don't know. But I'm just thinking 10, 15 down, years down the road, if it starts to peel, well, until only, we get to it, it'll look pretty uh, red. We're only talking the edge of the side of the building. But right. But it can't be that much to touch up the paint on that. No, every that's 10 true. Years. It's not the entire structure that we have to repaint. Right, that's true. It will have to be repainted. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know exactly when, but there's a manufacturer that makes those type of paints for concrete. So whatever, yeah. the, okay. whatever the product data says is what you have to do. Okay. In the proposal, it said 10 years. 10? Yeah. yeah, and it, you know, that's, it is a small amount of square footage, and we do, like, we wouldn't need to get special equipment to reach it, so I feel like yes. it could be handled in house. Yeah. Okay. Kathleen, you said you like the Ridgeland Line of Common that was rep 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 recommended by PZ. That's Line of Common. Yeah, this is pretty. That's yeah, I, what I love this, right? Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. nice. um, this one feels a little bit too dark. I prefer this color. I would want it to be tumbled, you know, because I agree this looks a little bit too new um, by contrast, but. If I think you that's can't actually, get that, I'd be fine. So do you, oh, I'm sorry, do you like that? When you lay it next to this, what do you think of the? Okay, can you show me? What is it's this? This is Main Street Dentals. Oh, oh that's okay. Okay. God, yeah, it's really cool. variegated. I wouldn't have thought it was that muddled. Look at you. Oh, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> so, I like that. Yeah, I think it will yeah. work. So um, cool. Yeah. What about if this were tumbled? since that's the most well, historic and mm -hmm. well, are you guys thinking about it? all tumbling it all going with it yeah i think there might not be a tumbled version of that right. product that's right. the problem they, yeah. like these are actual right. products i think i think having one section of it tumbled in and then one with the straight edge next to it you know is a kind of a neat 
I don't know, juxtaposition, if you will, that kind of plays off the wall. Color-wise, like, yeah. The classic green brick. Seems like 75% yeah. of the buildings are like this lighter, but then there's like a mix of mm -hmm. this, a little bit of the red, but it seems like these two are closest to most of the buildings. Yeah, I think it would, the colors work well, those two that are on top. Um, or this. No, I think yeah, it needs to be close together. It needs more contrast. So is that, was that one what was talked about for the end unit where the elevator would be? Right, so that was originally, like if we're looking at the right, the, the four the color, that would be what's Paul, in here. Sure. Okay. But like, I think the reason p and didn't go with that for their recommendation was because there was already so much of it. It just seems like there would just be too much and not enough variation. But if with just that portion, you know, actually, I'd it's rather kind of have it blend in than stand out, honestly. Mm -hmm. Well, a portion yeah. of it anyway, because I think it plays together. with the with uh, the color treatment of along the cornice and the windows. Actually, ties mm -hmm. well in with that 220 River that LA Barrington building, and so I mean, it doesn't necessarily tie because there's such a distance between Isn't the two. Is the building at the um, the lab is it lab? Not yeah. lab building. Yeah, that yeah, is. It's it's all this. But the one at the very end of the street that um, made a measure, it's a, it's a darker. Oh, well, that's a red. Yeah. 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 Be, I'm, so yeah. I'm just trying to think of like where there's other reference points yeah. within the village, you know, in the surrounding areas that could. And and Main Street's a little darker than I thought it might be. Yeah, it's more like Main Street definitely that and yeah. red. Oh, you mean there? Yeah. 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 It's did uh, Desmond have an opinion on, on this at all? Um, well, I mean, they started out with the initial renderings, Four and then it kind of grew legs from there. So, um, okay. What's your opinion, Scott? Uh, you know, I, I do like, I guess, uh, that tumbled look. Is Would it be possible to get a color like this in the tumbled look? Um, no. We don't know, right? Uh, but you know, I guess I, I don't mind. I don't mind this red one the way the PNZ proposed it. I don't. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. Um, you know, and to be honest, uh, you know, I'm somewhat colorblind anyways. So. Oh. oh, great! <laughs> All right, it's not. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not ask on colors. Yeah. Accusing himself. <laughs> but with this tumbled. It has some of that color in it, so I think mm -hmm. I can pull it from what's already there. So, yeah, there's buildings from all different eras throughout our town, but like the oldest, like downtown buildings, like River Street, as you get closer to across from the depot, those seem like the most historic, older <laughs> ones that we're trying to match the most. Right. Uh, that's why I'm leaning towards the lighter one, just because that. It's mostly this light one, yeah. and then a mix of some of the darker ones too. Um, and maybe one that's like between those two reds, but I feel like those two are the closest to matching the most historic buildings, not just any brick building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those two there, and then if, yeah, I agree. With the, the black, it looks kind of charred. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool, but very different than like we're trying yeah, to match. Yeah. The Plus, story. actually, too, like you said, it's such a small area because there's going to be windows and door on that on each one of those commercial spaces. So um, we're not talking about a great big, you know, a large surface area of that. So it would, it, it, I think it would be cool. It would work. Oh, yeah. you're banning for us. Yeah, that is. I feel like that's too it's, high it's contrast. That with this or that with this? Caleb, we yeah. want to change. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was yeah. fun. So put that one that. in the middle. Yeah. No, no, we can just <laughs> throw that right one out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's yeah, a, see, that those are a good match. Yeah. They are. They, they work flow. well together. If we could get that color in a slightly more worn look, that would be maybe even better. But we don't know if that's available, so I understand that. So Caleb as is one step back because it'll be recessed. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There you go. Now we're yeah, talking. No, <laughs> Look more square. Yes. I, I don't know. I, I, that particular shade of red is just not working for me, but these two do. But that that, and maybe that other one, I don't know, or another shade of red. There's got to be dozens. I feel That's like the these problem. are too close, that and that. 
They, yeah, they might be. And so if there's, I mean, this isn't the only option of red that we would have, would it? No, there's a couple of reds right there. Yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, I see. Wait, there's more? There's <laughs> two other reds. Let's make it more oh, so there's probably 10,000. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll be here for okay, so no. that one on the right actually has the, uh, the uh, weathering that we love. Oh, that's the, yeah, the, the tumble. So put those two, you two right here, put those yeah, two together. There we go. Yes, ah. thank you. Yes. Ah. No, and move those just, for a second. Just you, Kayla. Let's remember. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm like running a photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> do, do this. Do, those and then two. that one on the end, is, it, does everyone think, consider no. that to be? No, no, we're saying those Because these are just both. those two at all? Like, oh, they're yeah. already, they're tumbled. done. Yeah. Uh, it's too bad because I really think that if a lighter one, at least for one portion of it, would really set it well, off. Well, we do have the that, you know, on the right there's lighter. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is, but I guess I'm... I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I do, I, I like yes, that. I, I like right. that better than that one. Yeah. Well, if that one, if the one Kelly's holding in, yeah, that light one, were available in a tumbled look, would that change your minds on If it was available and tumbled, I, I wouldn't be mad about it. But yeah. I actually, I do like mm -hmm. that the reds connect, like mm -hmm. the, because there is a lot of yellow those, in downtown, so I like the, those two the reds colors, Those two swatches go together. They, they do, well. they do. Mm -hmm. And that while that still has the yellow in it, which continues with the right. other colors in right. downtown. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're gonna have black trim on everything, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I'm just wondering if I'm, we, I'm worried. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm just a little worried about the contrast of black trim if we were to go with the Illini Common and the lighter buff. If like it's harsh. gonna feel too heavy mm -hmm. or harsh, but mm -hmm. well, that's gonna help balance it. Yeah, again, it's accent color, so we're not talking about a great deal of surface area, but I'm just wondering if, if you just took what Caleb is holding with the darker trim, would it all end up being too dark? Where does no. it mean? Yeah, that's the one thing I worry about. What is well, that? This, look at this right to my eye, this is lighter than that. This right here is that. So it, this is pretty light. Say that again. I thought it was these. Adrian? Yo, Adrian. Where is it? The other white ones? Yeah. yeah. Honestly, my favorite is what we are holding. That's my favorite combo. Yeah. What she's holding. Where it says Me too. commercial. Yeah. I think I'm sold on those two as well. Me too. Okay. Everybody else? Well, is that, I mean, the whole structure is just going to be those two then? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. alternating. Yep. Yeah. But that right. red will be a little less red. Yeah. Those are good. And they're tumbled. So that's uniform. See, there's a fair amount of black in there. With the awnings and yeah, the cornices and, and the, everything else. So to be able to have it balance out. Right. Up. I know. And I'm just looking. You'd want, I would think you'd want one piece of it to stand out a little bit, but it gets toned down with the trim of the window and, and the cornice of the so yeah. I would really like to encourage you guys to go with the yellow brick. If it were, like I say, if it were if available in a tumbled version, that, that cream color, that wheat color one, can you see that on the corner? The way the I mean, I, I can. I like that. But I also think like we're looking at a small swatch. So if you expand this yeah. one with the lighter spots that are on there, it's gonna perceive well, much lighter. No, I get that, but and you got the monitor. Yeah, I think those. I mean, they're they're okay. I just wonder if they're just gonna blend together too. They're just gonna mix and mm -hmm. like you're you're gonna lose the contrast. That's with those two if you spread it out. But if you have the lighter one on the corner. What is the it, color of that one? Mm -hmm. This is Adrian. Okay. And this a line icon. Yeah. yeah. So we can get another rendering with those two colors. Yeah. I mean, the, if you look at the, so this is a PCHC version. Mm -hmm. It's this one. Yeah. That red is just slightly different than the red they mm -hmm. selected. So there will still be some pretty high contrast between the two, even though it, from a small sample, you can't tell when it's on a big building, you'll be able to tell. Yeah. yeah. So we can get a... You get more mass. We can get a rendering of those two. Because um, we're trying to make this decision like in the next two weeks. Okay. So mm -hmm. for the next meeting, we'll get a rendering of that. Do you need an official vote on them? 
Or do you need a consensus? In two weeks? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. right now you have so far consensus for this. Great. Um, so then we've got the color. Now I need two more decisions. <laughs> One for the windows of the, the elevator tower. Do you want to go with the square or the rounded? I like the rounded. 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 Well, rounded. rounded. What's the cost difference between the two? There isn't really any. It's just a it's a minimal amount it's of not treatment to do. Radius glass, fortunately. Right. It's, it's just the transom is right here. Yeah. So which you see on a lot of old buildings. Oh yeah, for sure. We I think we have it in our parts of it that right next door. Or yeah. right next door. Do we? In our yeah. Well, well, glass the bricks, so they're all a little Oh that's right, they did do that. Yeah. And then on the on the side, so we need to make a decision about the Class A finish or the regular non-Class A finish. And there is a price differential on that. And what's the benefit the real again for Class A? Class A? Regular non-Class A or Class A? Like is it the is texturing? That, is it, where is that going to be? Honestly, on the black. Oh, just in the picture of the regular non-class A. There's a. Is that a piece of conduit or is that an actual stress bump line? in the? Well, it's a piece of conduit. Concrete. You can see the 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 conduit holder. Here, here's the picture. Yeah, that's just the conduit. <laughs> okay. But so, that, I, that is that is painted. Okay. <coughs> I mean, honestly, what is the difference between the class A and the non-class so, A? Because looks like looking at these holes. pictures, class the non-class A looks that almost better. So <laughs> this is the picture that is not class A. It's painted, and if you can see like these little holes, mm -hmm. they're called bug holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, voids. Imperfections. Okay. In the concrete. You're using plywood rather than like a laminate. It'll be a laminate, space. but what happens is air gets trapped inside the concrete, oh, okay. and so it creates like a little bug hole. That other picture with the big wall that you saw. That there's going to be art put on that wall, like a big, huge mural. Um, so we filled in all the holes and ground it all down, so that it can be okay. painted out. I guess to receive paint. You know, my feeling on that is, if we're painting it black anyways, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna lose all those little divots and everything anyways. Right. I would think. I say the class A. Well, well, then help us out with the qual uh, with painted? the the benefits of one or the other. It. It. Right. I mean. Um, so Structurally, there shouldn't be any. It's just aesthetic. It's just aesthetic. We typically see it used on like architectural visual walls. So, okay. well, like I guess I, think it was too I honestly don't have enough of an opinion on either. So, yeah. whatever you guys say is fine. Well, hold on. <laughs> well, we're, there was a note in here about the stamping, wasn't there? Well. How, what was, I mean, we, we talked about a price differential between it, the non class A and class A. What is that? I thought it was a couple thousand bucks so yeah. mm -hmm. to do it. Okay. But a thousand hours? There is yes. an option to stamp the concrete in a brick pattern. That would be 40 grand. Whoa. Yeah. Just for that little bit. Really. But we'd still end up painting it, probably, right? Correct. So the, the original proposal that was just to do the paint black. Right. And the PZHC wanted to do this stamped concrete, which or stamped, which would look like brick instead of being painted black. So that would be an extra forty thousand. So Wait, instead of being painted black or yes. stamped and then painted instead black? Of, instead of so why couldn't we do both then? So do you want it to be stamped painted concrete black? Mm. Yeah, that see I don't know if we'd get really any benefit, but I mean with that it's um, it might be, I mean, I don't know if the texture would necessarily stand out with them, but when we're talking black, I mean, there we're going to have some time to decide the type of black, right? I mean, it could be a brown black, it could be a gray black, I mean, there's hundreds of different blacks, so we're not... But there's also that maintenance issue of if we want the public works crew to touch it up over time, it's going to be a lot easier if we just paint it black versus and doing stamping this it. stamping and making mm -hmm. it look like brick. We would not be able to... You, know, you still have the, the pillars are on the sides are still going to be brick. Those pillars are going to be brick. Right? Brick. Yeah. Um, right. So those so actually so the public works not have a, a spray. Everything. Paint spray. Those <laughs> would be just kind of not good. Well, 
if you're talking about stamps. Yeah, do we have? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah the vertical like brick. Were, right. They were brick. Yeah. Yeah. So right. yeah. they would they be sprayed? It'd be one color. You could do we have? Well, I am talking about one color. It would be. It would be monotone. But the pillars. I mean, it might be a little bit. They would just know. have a texture of the brick to it. Is the kind of how I envision that. Okay. Like flat with spraying. Yeah. Brick texture. Yeah. One color. Like if you painted brick. Okay, so I was just interpreting what the proposal was a little bit differently. So, but I'm going to defer to you because you have much more expertise than I. Do. <laughs> All right. You're saying to paint the actual but bricks on a flat? No, 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 no. I'm not spray. saying to paint the bricks. I'm saying you stamp yeah. it in the brick pattern mm -hmm. and then paint it. So it's not just concrete-looking brick. Right. Yeah. It looks like painted brick. And that's what this is describing. No. no. That's what I thought. <laughs> What is that? What do you mean? That's not what this is. So <laughs> the stamped, the, the direction we had was stamped, painted black. So it would be like a form liner in the concrete to make that brick kind of pattern on the concrete, and then it would be painted. Form liner. What is that? Form liner is so what makes it, you know, forty thousand dollars? It's it's a rubber pattern that has to be bought specifically for this. Put it inside the form, and when they pour the concrete, it forms the the shape of right the brick. It looks like brick. Right. So and then what are you doing after that? You're just leaving it as concrete. Painting it. You are painting it. The forty thousand okay. was only for the actual stamping. Right. That was it. Yes. Either way, it's the same painted black. It's just a question of whether or not the texture of it is smooth or semi-smooth, uh, or if it has this brick pattern in it. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what I. I'm just wondering if the I'm black, saying, right? The black. Now I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying now. But wouldn't the black stamped feature would it fight with the columns? That's what I'm, I mean. Color-wise, no, mm -hmm. but it might otherwise. I, to I don't the, think uh, so. The color blindness isn't going to affect the texture. Well, black is black. Well, true, but you never know about the texture and the light. Um, uh, okay. Kathleen, do you have an opinion on it? Where are you at? <laughs> um, I, I've just realized we, I'm, I've never seen a west or a north facade elevation. A what? Um, I know these are the two most important, um, but I'd love to see that the, as well. Which, uh, which elevation? Which one? The the south oh, and the from, west from, elevation from we Banditos and I'm, I'm east elevation from Banditos and from the back from Hill you're talking about yeah or well, from behind mm -hmm. we have yeah, yeah. from from the south it will just look like a parking lot entrance mm -hmm. because it'll be the first mm -hmm. that we're to do. that's what I kind of imagined yeah but I'd like to see it sure if we're spending all this money and then yeah we can yeah. see it from the and then kind of having an idea of how, like, it's the, it's the backs of houses that are to the east of it. Backyards of houses, or is it? Side yards to the one. Yeah. Backyards to the, to the east, yes. Yeah. So there is also an opportunity to do a mural on the mm. back wall behind mm. River Street Tavern. It's a large flag wall. Okay. So we're probably going to talk to them about the possibility of doing something through there. Okay. Take right. the money that we would spend on the stamping and put it into that as opposed to, I mean, I, I can't really see where the benefit of that small amount of space to stamp it would be. Yeah, the stamping know, is going to look worthwhile. Be weird on an angle. Like, they're all at like yeah. parallelograms going up, and we'll have. Brick lines that You're are have clearly cuts. not well, plumb. They, you guys can churn the pattern. No? It would be more weird. It would be more, more liner. liner. What it is. It would be more what? Liner. We would just have to have more liner. Put it at any plane, I guess, or wherever I, you wanted it. Okay. Now that you bring that angle it's not into what you this. normally do with bricks though just like it's turn them sideways on the building right i just i'm not following you we talk oh i see because it like it's getting a different element an 
because of the, like, because of the yeah. ramp. Yeah. Oh, you're just going to take the elevation. Shot. You're not talking about taking the actual angle of the street. You're going to. But if you do that, shoot a line. that's also kind of weird looking. You've got, like, it's you've got like mitering and all this other kind of. This. Oh, well, I, like I say flat. Line them flat. Up. I say okay. flat. Flat paint. Flat it is. Flat it is. All right, flat. All right. There, we Done. see you 40 grand. Thank you. And then are we going the Class A or the non-Class A? Uh, I'm fine uh, with the non-Class A. I'm fine with the non-Class A. Same as the finish, yeah. I don't care on that one, yeah. yeah. The non-Class was the cheaper. The cheaper one, good. Mm -hmm. All right, we have all of our decisions. All right, all right. cool. So Thank now we- you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your patience with us. Appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, so that'll take us then to item D. And thank you for your help, too. Yeah. If we could have a motion. It's a long one. Uh, okay, I will move to approve an ordinance providing for the issuance of not to exceed 6.5 million general obligation bonds in one or more series for the purpose of financing the cost of certain capital projects in the village refunding certain outstanding obligations of the village and providing for the levy and collection of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal of the interest on said bonds and authorizing the proposed sale of said bonds to the purchaser thereof. Second. Mm -hmm. Questions? I mean, yeah. Let's talk about this for a while. We're going to spend. We're going to. We're going to borrow a lot of money here. Please, this is um, the one that gives me the most odds about the other stuff. Was easy. Well, this so is wait. First off, the first question that needs to be answered is why are we doing this before we approve the contract? So, the contract um, was approved earlier this year when we approved the initial. Well, part the of final the, bill. Contract. Right. So the the uh, what they call the GNP amendment to the contract mm -hmm. is going to happen once all of these decisions have been made about the color and all of that and then they put it out to bid which they've already started doing on some of the things that have already been decided because the layout has been decided and so this last remaining decisions basically we can you know there's not a lot of price variation in these final decisions so they've already sort of put this out to bid to their contractors who were then going to get a certain amount of time to then give them back pricing and then in July, they'll do the, what they call the GMP amendment. So that will say, here's the final price of the garage, here's how much money it's going to cost, and you know, we're gonna basically move forward. So I would look at this decision tonight as, if, if we're gonna move forward with borrowing this money, we're, we're building this garage. So there's not really, I mean, assuming this passes this evening, um, there's still an opportunity, I guess, if we wanted to, to pivot and to postpone or delay or not move forward. But, but basically, we're getting to the point where it's time to make a decision. Um, it's May 20th, they want to break ground in July, and they want to have it substantially, substantially completed by the end of the year. So time is becoming of the essence. Mm -hmm. And we have about six weeks where we're going to determine um, how much we're going to borrow once we get that final contract back and we know the exact pricing. So we're going to know how much to borrow. Um, but this actually gets that ball rolling um, because it takes a lot of time to put this bond sale together. And we want to tee it up or sequence it so that once we have those final numbers and we know how much we're going to spend, we can go and immediately sell the bonds. If we wait until we approve the contract in July, and then do the ordinance, and so then we elongate the timeline, and we would not be able to construct this year. So that is a long answer to your no, short question. That's a good answer. I just wanted to know. Got it. <laughs> okay. And um, while, while we have a minute to be excited about our increased bond rating that we got last week. Yes. yes. We're going to save substantial interest costs on this bond because we got an upgrade, and we're doing quite well financially. And also, we have an opportunity to refinance an existing bond from 2012, which will save us additional money. So between the bond upgrade and the refinance, um, things are looking up in many ways. I'd also like to point out, too, that in the motion itself, where it indicates that uh, the collection of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal bonds, that's really 
the meaning of that is not that we're going to in implement a new tax to pay for this. It's just that's all part of the current tax process that we have that brings money in, sales tax and so forth, to pay this off. So it's just really a kind of it's going along with the normal approach that we would have for any capital improvement. Yeah, project. but we haven't had a six point five million dollar or five point three million dollar, you know, spend, you know, in front of the board since No, no, it's been a while. I think the water system. The water system. That was like five, close to five, I think it was. That was what, Longer than that. Like Phil's that. Phil, how long is that? Water system. What's that? Is that four, four and a half? Four and a half, I think it was. Yes. Yeah, so I think that was like 10 years ago, I think. This is a general obligation bond. And why, why villages and towns get really good rates on general obligation bonds is because they have the ability to levy a tax to pay them. So in the event that the village at some point in time didn't have the money to pay this from other sources, we, we would be required to levy a tax to pay this. But one of the things we've talked about extensively that I, I'm going to continue to say for the duration of this project is that we are not planning to levy any tax to pay for this garage. We are trying to pay for this garage with other sources. So we have almost a million dollars in grants from the state of Illinois, which is fantastic. We have a million and a half dollars in TIF also fantastic that we're going to put towards this and then the remaining portion will be borrowed but when we repay that debt the the as it stands right now we're planning to use the BDD, BDD tax we've had some discussions about other options that might also pay for this debt service that wouldn't include any tax on the residents it would be if we do go with the BDD it would be largely funded by the taxes that are generated by the district that includes the downtown so everybody that patronizes the downtown would be participating and paying for that um, resource and not any general obligation bond tax that would be levied as a property tax or as a yeah as a general property tax could also have a couple of big things <laughs> yeah is this is this um, you know if we if we did this loan and we started construction would it still be possible to apply for grants later for this, you know, uh, capital project? So we will continue to pursue any and all grants, and some of them could be offsetting different parts of the project. So like those two grants that we got from the state of Illinois, you can't put two grants towards the same project for like construction, so we put one grant towards the purchase of the property and one grant towards the construction of the garage. So there's other, you know, like we have this ComEd pool relocation, like if we get an additional grant, we may put it towards that. We may put it towards the design fees and, or the architectural versus the construction. So there's different, you know, and some grants don't have that kind of restriction where you can just, we can put as many grants as we can towards that. So we will still try to obtain additional grants um, but um, basically when we get to six to eight weeks from now when we have our final pricing and we're ready to borrow and we have to tell them how much money to borrow, once we tell them how much money to borrow, that's how much we're gonna have to repay. And the, the bonds themselves I think are callable after 10 years, which basically means we don't get any credit for paying them off early before 10 years, but after 10 years, you can then refinance or pay them off and then not accrue the additional interest. So it's a 15 year bond and We, have to, we would have to stay with the bank's schedule for 10 years. Correct. For the first 10. After that, if Which we is had why the ability, we could pay it off. Right. Yeah. Which is why we're refinancing this 2012 bond because it became callable in 2022. And you know, now it makes sense to refinance it at a lower rate. Cool. So in, your, um, in the schedule that Brian has put through on the repayment plan, was that based on this lower rate um, or what rate was that based on? So we've been Before very- Before Moody's um, or after Moody's? Basically the rate that we've been using to extrapolate out you know, mm -hmm. our future payments is 5%. And we, we feel pretty confident that we're gonna get much better than 5%, but we wanna be very- Conservative. Yes. Because yes. that's yes. brand is in you. <laughs> yeah, I don't want us to get in a situation that we can't sustain and 5% mm -hmm. is definitely the ceiling, um, so that's what we've been using. Okay. 
And then could you speak towards the uh, competing borrowing uh, interests or other projects that are competing for uh, money and like the lead service line replacement, how this wouldn't be an either or, because I see that as uh, a higher need, but if we can do both and they're from different sources, um, I think that's relevant. Can you speak towards that funding? Yes, so we talked a little bit about um, an additional IEPA loan a couple months back for the rehab of the water tower, the second water tower, and then for lead service line replacement and some other <coughs> water service infrastructure projects. So IEPA loans are phenomenal because it's basically like free money borrowing. There's, the interests are so phenomenally low that it doesn't really make sense for us to spend a million dollars to rehab the water tower and pay for it out of pocket when we could borrow the money for nearly nothing and spread it out over the life of that project. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can you know, try to stagger those a little bit so that we know that it has a 20 year lifespan and then in 20 years we're basically paying off the last borrowing of it and then we're gonna start borrowing for the next 20 years. So smoothing that out, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like you don't buy a house and like if you can, you got a 10 year plan, you got a 15 year plan, you got a 20 year plan. Right, so you're maintaining as you go and, and not sort of like letting the garage fall apart before you then rebuild it and then paying immediately for it to be completely rebuilt. Um, but one other thing, we're not doing, it's not an and or, or an if, if then, this is a, we can do this and we can do that. Uh, you know, we're, we're pretty well positioned. We had a, some good conversations earlier this spring about other ways that we could increase revenue if we needed to, and I continue to reiterate that mm -hmm. at this point we don't need to. We're in, we're in a very good place. We are tracking well. We are paying off our obligations. Uh, we're generating enough revenue. Our staffing isn't too high for us to be able to stay sustain. We're doing a lot of really good things, making good decisions, being prudent with residents' dollars, and trying to put ourselves on a, a long-term path that will position us for success. And one of you know testament to positioning ourselves for success is having this potential for this um, performing arts venue in the village. So, you know, Richard was in incredibly modest when he talked about the economic driver that this performing arts venue is. Um, this, this parking garage, you know, it, some people say, oh, why are we spending this much money on a parking garage? The parking garage is an investment. It is an economic engine in and of itself. It is one of the biggest reasons that the Rouse Center is even interested in coming here because they need parking and having this parking availability is something that they see as uh, an asset and something that will help them be successful as well. And if they're successful, the restaurants will be more successful. I mean, the, the vacancy rate, he's talked about Crystal Lake going from 30% to 100% and then that 100% is then at 2.5 miles in the surrounding area. It's pretty incredible. Um, you know, our downtown vacancy rate is zero, but we also have you know, some opportunities mm -hmm. to add some more commercial space to the downtown mm -hmm. and with the finite ability to add more parking, you know, this, this garage really does lend itself to being a huge economic driver, especially with the added commercial storefront space. So while I understand that it's a difficult decision to make, it also the economics of it makes sense and you know, we wouldn't be recommending it if we didn't think that the return on the investment was there. And it would be, you know, sort of this. If you, you know, if you build it, they will come. You know, he said that earlier. Um, we know the parking is is needed, and this very much aligns with the long-term goals of the village and is fiscally responsible. Good. Thank you. So, any other questions, comments? No. Trustee Kunze? Yes. Trustee Saviano? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Sauter? Yes. And Trustee Mahoney? Yes. Okay, then that will take us to our. We have to re oh, re vote on the consent agenda. Oh, that's right. Five votes on 5C. Um, on 5C. So um, do we need to read that separately in? How would you like it done, Kelly? Um, well, the mayor was supposed to vote, so he didn't. So we missed a vote. So can you just cast your vote? This is for item C? Yes. yes. So wait, wait the bidding for Albrecht mm -hmm. Enterprises and demolition. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had to We had to put a comment. You know what? We didn't. 
Is there anybody in the public who would like to address the board on either an agenda or non agenda <laughs> item? I'm your entire public in attendance. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to say it. Okay. So now that'll take us to our village reports. And I will start out by saying uh, last year we had baby ducks falling into the storm sewers. Uh, this year it's a cell phone. Phil, I'd like to thank you for the efforts. Uh, there was a resident on Howard Avenue that had a, a foam actually fall into the into the muck and then they had to of course take the did we get the fire department the, the grill so? yeah <laughs> right the grill off the to try and retrieve it I understand they weren't successful unfortunately but uh, and then also to the mowing of the the dwell uh, in the back at uh, Northgate Manor I had a, actually more than one call on that so I appreciate that so um, that's all I have Andy what you got? Um, I was going to ask about uh, the parking lots near Hager, like the one that um, we've owned for a little while. Is that open for public parking or can it be or are there things that we would need to do? Yeah, we've had um, some discussion on it. So we, we do um, have the ability <laughs> to open that up for public parking. I might just want to have public works and police just take a look at it and make sure that it's safe entry and exit and then we can put some signs on it and allow people to park there for the time being. Is that on the north side of the bay? Yes. Northwest yeah. corner. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Northwest corner. Right. It's the one some parents park in to pick up their kids from a manual. Yes. Yeah. It's like the manual overflow. <laughs> Great. Yeah. 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 No, we do. No, we do. We do. We do. No, we do. We do. We do. The whole kit and caboodle, I would say. Van Buren to South Rock okay. along the main lane. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and even the lot by the bike trail, um, like if we could have like bike parking signs and kind of push bikers to park there instead of in the congested, busier areas. Yeah. Um, that might be a temporary quick win for some parking now that we own all those spots. Yeah. Just kind of, well, we're working on it. Close it down when we need to for construction, but since it might be a while. All right, we'll look at it. So, some ideas to look into. That's all. Great. Trish. So, um, the wall that heals is coming. It is. Yeah, it's coming. And so, I'm going to, I volunteered to put um, flags by the VFW tomorrow and then sign in people at Woodstock Harley Davidson to start that ride as it comes into town um, on Wednesday. So, it's here from May 24th to 27th on Randall. So, be sure to check it out. It's amazing. And there's always tears when I go to the wall. So. Yeah, it's appreciative cool that it's going to be here. Yeah. We get it for Memorial Day, which is even more important. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Phil, I noticed you guys did some tree trimming around the Hager property. Yet. Um, nice job. Yes. Did, yeah, we get, did we get in those houses yet? Or <laughs> did we get in the houses yet? I know there was an issue I've with the locks. Briefly been involved, yes. Yeah. Okay. One's empty, one's not. Oh, <laughs> right. Mm. Um, I mean, not habited, but just filled right. with stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's it's be a clear of the contents. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I have no other comment. Kathleen. No. Um, congratulations on the whole team that worked on getting the closing done on Hager. Hager, Hager. Yeah. Um, that was long, and I was just going to say, I saw the neighbor in question out in his yard working, but We'd already closed, so I <laughs> resolved all that. So, um, so congratulations on that. Um, the property that is at the, it's, I think it is, it, is it Hills, Hills, yeah, Hill Street, at the end of the municipal parking lot on the same side of the street. Grass is like a foot and a half tall. My dog was really upset that he couldn't go walk in there. Um, hill? Next to the house with the red roof. Oh, oh, that. At this the station. Right. The yeah. Lot. Yeah, we, we know the owner. We can cut that and get um, there and cut that. Okay. Uh, that was one thing. Um, I had a question for Bill regarding the market. Um, not a huge attendance. I think we maybe had 12 vendors last last week yeah are yeah. you seeing any 
have people come and then found out that they can't park in the gravel lot anymore um, and then leave, or is it just it's we're slow to get started? No, that really was not the issue. I think there was uh, graduations in the area, mm -hmm. and there was a few uh, whole town garage sales. I think about half of them, and because uh, the weather was really it was beautiful. On our side. Beautiful, but uh, our numbers were down. But we still were pretty busy with customers. Okay. Like losing, losing a lot so far hasn't been an issue. Because nobody was. Well, there were a few people up towards the north end, but yeah. we're, we're side, using but there's still a lot of space. North and south of the depot, and then uh, east of the depot also. And if it comes to it, we could use. That median? The west side of the trail, but it gets a little tricky with bikers coming mm -hmm. down. Uh, it'd be great if we could have a, a sign either walk your bike or slow down, or, uh, or I don't know where they would be for it too, but uh, because that would be, we, we've never used that area, never can be used that area right. because of the bikers, and that would be our concern. We've used it for other events, though, um, like Oktoberfest. We have them in the garage. Yeah. 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 See how much more signs. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, you do have? Yeah, we do. Walk your bike mm -hmm. signs? Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be helpful even if we don't use that side of the trail. And then finally, my third request, Jeff, can we get um, our recommended names for the depot council yeah, done, um, yeah. because there are definitely yeah, some more things that we want to do. Can we get that on the next agenda? Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Not a problem. I don't want to become a pain no. in your butt. No, 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 no. I've already got, I've already <laughs> talked to a number of people and so okay. we're, we're cool. So um, we can take care of that. Okay. And if, and if there's somebody that is beyond the people that went through the process and filled out the application, You'll be forwarding it to the rest of the team? Yeah, my, it, everybody I've talked to have said you need to go out and apply or uh, fill out the, uh, the application online so everyone's going through I the same wanna. process. Okay. So. Cool. Oh, could I just add one comment? Sure. Uh, the restrooms outside are beautiful. I mean, we've, we've received many compliments. Oh, good. Uh, both the rooms and the back. My concern now is, are they being locked and unlocked mm -hmm. with sunrise and sunset? They are, yes. Yeah. If, if that's working out, then that's all we need. We haven't had any vandalism. We yeah, had some of that sick in the men's room. And, yes. Uh, and it was cleaned out. Did hear about that? Marty, Marty came to work. Uh, he wasn't pleased because he connected the hose to the side of the, the building, and that's lost it hadn't been turned out yet. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, well enough. <laughs> cool. Kelly. Congratulations on the Hager property and just want to thank everyone that helped bring it to the finish line. It was yeah. uh, definitely took some creative maneuvering, but yeah. so. <laughs> well, thank you. appreciate it. So Joe. Go for it. No. Chief. I was just gonna echo what uh, Trisha had to say. The, they're expecting that right to come through our town around four fifteen, four twenty. Mm -hmm. Wednesday. Great. Cool. Great. And we're ready for the final. Soup. Soup. How did Cop on Top do? So, unfortunately, the. the oh, I'm pop, sorry. Pop okay. It, it went okay. Okay. <laughs> Phil. No report. No report. And Erica, last but not least. Um, yeah, no report. No report. Great. Okay. Uh, we're not going into executive session, I believe, so entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you all. We'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.